in this video, I'm going to give you my top tips and advice on how to do an online proctored exam with Pearson View for your Microsoft certifications. Now, if you haven't done this before, it can seem quite confronting. Please watch and take my advice. The first time I did this, I failed to get in and I had to go through the whole process again. So I'm going to save you from that pain. I'm going to go through this in three parts. The first part is about what to do with running a proper test to make sure that you've got your system set up properly. This is where I wish I'd had my own advice before. The second part is the sort of setup and getting into the exam, which is kind of the most nerve wracking part. And the third part, maybe the most nerve wracking part too, actually is actually the experience of doing the exam and finishing it. My name's Lisa Crosby. If you haven't met me before, my channel is all about tech for non-techies helping you get started. And I hope this video helps you feel comfortable with getting started with certifications, especially when you're doing them online from home. So first step in terms of doing a test, and honestly, this is the most important thing, because if you get this right, you're going to make it so much easier for yourself on the day. What you can do is a test of your system. Now, when you go through and do the test, it'll take you through and it'll do a test that looks like this. You've got like your webcam test and your microphone test and your internet speed test. Great. That's not the end of it. That's where I stopped and went, yeah, I'm good. I've done the test. No, no, keep going. What you want to do is do the full test process through like this. You go right through the process to where they launch the software on your machine. You will have downloaded it. It'll give you a code, launch the software on your machine because that's the part that's the real test. You need to have everything else closed. No browsers open, no processes running in the background. Do a bit of a control alt delete and make sure everything is closed down before you start. Otherwise that software won't launch. And if the software doesn't launch, you can't do the exam. So do that part as a test as well. And if you've got it working in the test, then recreate that same setup of switching everything off before you do the exam for real. Now you'll know you've done a full and complete test when you see this screen. It's launched and it gives you a test question, which is just a basic nothing of a true false question. And you say, yes, OK, that is when you know you've done a complete test. All right, so now let's look what happens on the day of the exam. Firstly, you've made it a lot easier for yourself because you've done your test and you know what's going to happen because when you log into the exam, it's all the same things that you did in your test. The other thing you really want to do here is make the room as clear as possible and make it as easy as possible for the proctor and therefore for yourself to get through this process. Now, the reality here is that some stranger is watching online and looking in your home and whatever. And frankly, nobody likes that, but this is this is how it's done. You can't have anything on your desk. You can't have a second monitor. You need to clear the space. You can't have a glass of water. You can't have a piece of paper. This kills me a bit because I am I write in order to think. Um, you can't do that. So you need to have a completely clear desk. My other advice to you, if it's at all possible, is to work in a room that is as clear as possible as well. Now, here are some pictures of my room. I'm lucky that I work in a small bedroom that I can close off. I know not everyone has that luxury, but wherever you are, one of the things you can do is to just toss some sheets over stuff in the background. So you'll see here I've got like a sheet over my bookshelves so that none of that becomes distracting for the proctor. They don't kind of have to analyze it. It just, I don't know, it just kind of gives you a bit more privacy and also makes the whole thing easier for them. So what you need to do then is also pick a time that is quiet for you when you're booking your exam time. Try and find a time that's likely to be most quiet in your household. That can be early in the morning, late in the evening. They do have these exams around a 24 hour cycle because they're running around the world. So you've got to go with the time that's the most quiet. If anyone knocks on your door and comes in and says, hello, your exam is over. I have found if there's slight background noises in somebody's walking past in the corridor or using a bathroom in the corridor that that hasn't been picked up and that's okay. So just make sure that anyone else who lives with you knows not to knock on the door and come in and talk to you during the exam because they won't be the most popular person with you afterwards, believe me. Right, so exam day, I've got a nice clear desk. I've covered all my stuff over the back with uh, with bed sheets and so on. I go in to log in and I now have a nice familiar experience. It's going to take me through firstly taking a usually very unflattering at that hour of the morning photo of myself so they know it's me doing the exam and that's who's on the webcam. I need to take photos of my ID, driver's license or passport and you need to take a back and a front photo of those things. And then you have to take photos of the room in front of your computer, behind, left and right, and so that you've got all of the angles on the room. And the better job you can do with those photos again is going to make it easier for the proctor. Once you've done that, 
put your phone aside and the software launches. <laughs> We're through the hardest part. It can take, you can be sitting there for, it says you can wait for up to 15 minutes for a proctor to join. I've never waited more than maybe three or four minutes. It's pretty quick. And then sometimes what happens, I think if my photos have been good enough and my room's clear enough, they just put me straight through and the exam launches and no one talks to me. Other times I'll get a little message in the chat window saying, hi, I'm Nancy or whoever the proctor is for the day. They're usually very friendly. Can I call you? And then they'll call and they'll say, oh, can you just show me around the room? And then you have to sort of hold up your web cam I've done it on my laptop kind of awkwardly holding the laptop up and looking around the room and showing them around the room now how difficult that process is is going to depend on your setup and how well you did your photos and so on so back to my earlier advice about the clearer you can possibly make your space the easier that part of the experience is going to be for you I found once they asked me to close the blinds on my window I don't know how someone was gonna maybe I had answers outside or something anyway so just all of those things and honestly these things get easier once you've set up your space once and been through that process once you kind of know the drill and it's uh it's easier to do it and now it's time to do the exam and show off all your knowledge so once the proctor has checked out your room once you've got that software launch you're basically in that exam experience now it's slightly disconcerting because there is somebody watching you the whole time. You don't see that person's face at any point, but there's a little window at the top of the screen. And if they do need to contact you, I guess if you're fidgeting, I haven't ever had them contact me during the middle of an exam, but if you're suddenly rifling through your pockets or covering your face or doing things like that, I know if you're sort of talking to yourself out loud, that can trigger it as well. They'll just talk to you and say, hey, listen, what are you doing? If you're doing it too much, your exam could be cancelled. So just be really mindful of that. And again, this experience, Experience is much harder for some people than others but um, to the extent that you can control those things just try to concentrate and sit still and do the exam from there um, you'll have a little clock actually in the top because you don't have you can't wear your watch your phone's put off to the side so you'll have a timer inside the exam software itself telling you how much time is left to go and you just work your way through getting all that awesome knowledge out of your head and into a certification the end is pretty anticlimactic. When you're done, you'll press a finish button. You'll see your exam score. Um, once you've finished, you've finished. You can't go back in, obviously, and it will just close that software. It'll prompt you with a survey, which you can do or not do. And then it's just you in your lovely, clean, empty space with the computer and you can go about your day. That's it. So remember, make sure you do a full test. Clear your space as much as you possibly can. Go to the toilet before, <laughs> before you do exams because you're sitting there for a good couple of hours and good luck.